Another week, another legal talk here on uh, E-Radio with Han and Han Attorneys. Today discussing uh, customary marriage with uh, uh, Tabiso Chikudu from uh, Han and Han. Uh, Tabiso, how's it going? Are you well? Hi, Eon. I am well, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity once again uh, to be on your show. Yeah, nice to talk to you. So when is a customary marriage? Well, uh, Eon, a, a customary marriage, if... Um, I understand your question well is means a marriage that is concluded in accordance with customary law and practices of indigenous black people in South Africa. Uh, I must also mention that although uh, customary law varies from one ethnic group to another, there are in particular three common practices between the different groups. And uh, that includes uh, practices such as paying of lobola, which is dowry, uh, the celebration of the of the wedding uh, and the handing over of the bride. In essence, that is um, what a customary marriage simply is. Okay, and why would you say is uh, this topic important right now to be so? Well, it is important uh, for two reasons. Firstly, there are thousands of customary marriages that take place in South Africa every year. And a lot of these couples who undertake customary marriages take likely the legal effects of such marriages. And secondly, over the last few years, we have seen cases uh, before our courts that involve uh, customary marriages. And you might be familiar with some of them. For example, in 2016, there was the singer Device Stambo case. And this case involved a popular rap artist by the name of Double HP, whose father was in fact alleging that the, his son was not married uh, to this young lady because the handing over of the bride had, uh, had not taken uh, place. And therefore he was alleging now that he was dead, this woman was not entitled to his estate. And the second one, uh, which you also may be familiar with, is the one by uh, uh, involving uh, Winnie Mandela, the former uh, wife of uh, the former president, uh, Nelson Mandela, who went to court claiming that uh, she was still married to the former president in terms of customary law, even though their civil marriage had been dissolved at that particular moment, I pause. I remember, I remember those cases, actually, now that you mentioned it. But uh, the question is, does abandoning your customary marriage dissolve the marriage? Well, Ian, now you are getting to the juicy part. <laughs> and uh, a simple answer is, um, is no. Uh, abandoning your marital home and simply moving on with someone else does not dissolve. Uh, your customary marriage. There is a recent case, in fact, I think this case was decided two weeks ago. Uh, it's called the Gaza versus Master of High Court, uh, where a man left his wife and started staying with a girlfriend. Uh, I must say this guy is a real diehard for marriage because even though he had left his wife, he attempted to marry the other woman and the home affairs uh, refused uh, to grant such. Uh, because this was during the subsistence of his first marriage. When he died, the girlfriend attempted to claim from his estate on the basis that she was a life partner. And the court um, held that even though the girlfriend could be regarded as a life partner because they had been staying uh, together for a while, they were taking reciprocal duties. Uh, she could not claim uh, from the deceased estate as she was not married to him, but rather he, the deceased was married to someone else. And even though this case was a civil marriage case, uh, the same principles apply in terms of customary marriage. I must say it is, it is commonplace. When I grew up uh, in, in the township, uh, we, we have uncles who just left their homes and they never got divorced even up until today. And they went and got married to someone else. It's just that the matters have never been taken to court. But in simple terms, no, uh, just leaving your marital home or abandoning your marital home does not dissolve your customary marriage. 
Okay, so how about when you actually marry another person in terms of civil law? Um, there is a very instructive case, Ion, um, in, in, in response to this question. Uh, and the case is called Monyebao versus Letuaba. So in this case, a couple was married in terms of customary law. And their marriage lasted for about a year, basically. Then the husband moved out uh, and she he entered into another customary marriage with a different woman. Now, the other why his wife also entered into a civil marriage with a different man. A few years later, the husband died, as in the, the, first, the husband from the first marriage uh, died. And both of the women, that is the first wife and the second wife, uh, and the second woman, claimed that they were the rightful heirs to his estate. And uh, we don't know how much his estate was worth for them to really mount such a, a, a you know, a fight. But uh, what was the question was whether the civil marriage of the wife terminated a customary marriage to the deceased, or whether the customary marriage of the man to another woman dissolved his marriage to the first wife. And the reason I say this, this, this uh, is instructive is the court held that Section 8 of the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act requires a decree of divorce to be issued by a court of law in order for the first customary marriage to be dissolved. And in consequence, the latter marriages that are entered into are null and void. So in simple terms, if you just leave your wife and marry someone else by civil law, that marriage would become null and void up in issue. <laughs> and then finally, I have another difficult question for you. Can you enter into an anti-nuptial contract in a customary marriage? A simple answer is yes. In terms of Section 7 of the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act, any customary marriage entered into after the commencement of the act is in community of property. Unless the spouses expressly con con uh, exclude that through an anti nuptial contract. In other words, you have to conclude an anti nuptial contract in order for your marriage to be out of community of property. Uh, I think we, we grew up thinking that it is evil uh, to enter into an anti nuptial contract because you are planning. Uh, to divorce the person at the later stage. Mm. But we understand that people are entering into business contracts, which is risky and can put um, the estate or, you know, at risk. And therefore, it is very advisable uh, to enter into an anti-natural contract, even if you enter into a customary marriage. Some wise words and some very uh, insightful information there today, uh, Tabisa. Thank you so much for uh, shedding some light on that matter. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Ian. Are you or your business in trouble and struggling to find a solution? Call Hahn & Hahn Attorneys as we assist clients in finding solutions. We specialize in consumer and food law, commercial and construction law, forensic investigations and administrative law. Visit hahnlaw.co.za. That's H-A-H-N. We assist clients nationwide. Hahn & Hahn Attorneys. Because we care. Don't miss Legal Talk with Hahn & Hahn Attorneys Wednesday mornings at 10 on E-Radio.